Hey guys, to help run the forums, host the website, and travel, we've introduced a universal service fee for in-depth coverage, including this video. My goal is to be unbiased and transparent. It's a privilege to serve you. This is not an endorsement. Let's get into it. Hey guys, we're back in Long Beach, California. I'm hanging out with Chris Nolte from Propel Bikes. We've got a couple really awesome ones today from Extra Cycle. This is the E Stoker and then the RFA. And what does RFA stand for? I'm ready for anything. Ready for anything. This thing is, I mean, it's a pretty cool bike because it's a mid-tail cargo bike. Right. It's something like, you know, eight inches shorter than the E Stoker and the E Swoop, which we reviewed a while back. That's right, yeah. But yeah. it actually comes in two different flavors. So there's like the utility and then the sport version. What are we looking at over here? So this is the utility version and it has movable dropouts. So this is something that Extra Cycle actually patented. It's this completely new design concept and allows the bike to kind of work with you as you grow and as your uh, needs might change. Yeah. So the standard configuration is more like a standard wheelbase bike and then with the utility version as it is now, this is another seven inches longer so it enables you to carry more um, and, and balance it out. It's pretty cool. So standard bikes are about 72 inches in, in length. And then this one, you got plus seven inches and then, you know, plus eight more inches and you get like the full long tail cargo setup. Uh, we've got the optional front rack here, which works pretty well. I like that it's bolted to the head tubes, so it's not gonna flop around while you're steering, while you're parking. We've got this excellent double leg kickstand, gives you a lot of stability. You'll notice that there's a stabilizing spring up here to flop a later, that's what that's called. These are steel frames, so steel tends to be vibration dampening and like extra sturdy. This is a 400 pound maximum weight capacity, right? That's right, yeah. That's pretty, that's impressive. A lot of electric bikes are just 250 or 300. And we've got this, cargo tail section. This is what Chris was talking about. So this is the utility option. It's a little bit longer and we've got kind of a padded seat. And what what is this called? These new handlebar things here. So these are called the snack bars. So yeah, this will fit the standard hoop tee as it's called. That's what had on the E-Swoop as well as this E-Stoker here. And uh, that's a new addition that they have as well where you can actually add the snack bars to the one side of the hoop tee if you wanted to, just to make getting on and off a lot easier. and you have huh. a, a, a larger child or something like that. They don't have to climb over it. And this threw me off at first when Chris told me one side. It was like, see how this whole bar can like slide out and off? Yeah, well, you could just put like a half bar here and a half bar here if you wanted. You have a little entry or just one up front. So that's the cool way you can kind of mix and match with this. I like the hoopty because it's got this like padded grip point that also protects fingers. So if the bike tipped or if you're in a, maybe like a tight door or something and you scratch, you don't, you don't want the little ones to get their, their fingers pinched. So that's my favorite bar accessory. But this is a little bit more approachable. And I love the colors, just happens to match Propel's colors, right? That's kind of fun. Feels really good. We've got the same padded seat, but we don't have uh, Yep windows on this. Instead, you gotta get like the side mounting Yep child seat, right? Yeah, so the new one is called Next. N-E-X-X-T, mm -hmm. uh, so that kind of clamps on from the sides as opposed to inside the window. There's also a couple other seats that use this new sort of mounting system, okay. which might be a little bit more universal. Uh, yeah, so. did that just come out when Thule bought Yep? Yeah, well that was a Thule product and then Thule bought Yep and they kind of combined the oh. two basically. Yeah. Nice, man. Nice. So, you know, the story here is that this is the longer option. Um, if you get the sport model, it's it's a slightly shorter rack. You might not be able to fit quite as much cargo or you know two kids, but it's still it's pretty versatile. And they do sell that aftermarket, so you could get the utility configuration to start. And then over time, you're like, I want to save some space. I'm not actually carrying my kids around anymore. I'm going to do like more of a, a standard length bicycle. That's that's exactly right. And and that's really the concept where it can adapt to your specific needs and and speaking with ross the co-founder the, the i'm sorry the founder of extra cycle yeah uh he was talking about how you know so many bikes are built to serve this you know specific purpose and they can't really adapt to your needs but this was really built to work with somebody from really in theory when they're young up until they're really old like having that longer wheelbase is beneficial when you're older stability right right so a little bit more stable and a little bit more comfortable generally speaking and then also just to have the ability to to change depending on your family needs which is a quite a common one sure uh, that's something that we're seeing now you know somebody might buy this bike now 
and they know that they have kids in their future or maybe they just had a, a kid yeah. and they want to be able to adapt it to those needs and, and not necessarily make the jump to a long tail right away. Right, right. That's pretty cool. I, the whole concept is ready for anything. See the logo down here. Um, and then not having to worry about buying and selling. And it's like you buy one bike, you take good care of it. It does come in just this, this one frame, frame size. Is that right? That's right. One frame size, two different colors. But look at this. Look how many spacers we have up here. So you can really raise this and have an upright handlebar position. You could take a couple out and get a little bit more aggressive if you wanted to long seat post here that gives you a lot of options for for height and then this mid-step frame design so it's a little bit more approachable but still you know fairly stable it's not going to give you the same sort of frame flex that some of the other cargo bikes do and you look at this is reinforced and everything it's it's pretty awesome we weighed this back at the shop it was about uh, 70 pounds but without these optional bars and pads and stuff they say it's about 64 pounds right yeah and without it. that too yeah thank you so you know that's kind of cool the stock the base model is 44.95 right with the standard performance line motor yeah. performance line motor whereas this one we've got it outfitted with a performance line speed so standard performance and performance line speed offer up to 63 newton meters of torque right but they also have this in the cx so the difference is going to be if you want the roughly 28 mile per hour top speed great you know 63 newton meters of torque if you get the cx is a little bit more you know cargo hauling potential a little bit torquier that's up to 75 newton meters of torque and then the prices vary depending on you know the different motor configurations there's even a double battery option so you can see a single battery right here this one happens to have the power pack 500 they also sell it with the 400 if you want and it that does that come back to the standard performance line that's right so the base price is 400 watt hour battery with the performance line standard yeah. performance line and then bump up from there 500 watt hour and the option to do the thousand watt hours with the two 500 watt hour pack. a lot of options part of being ready for anything is having having a lot of possibilities and the cool thing is the way they did the routing of the cables and everything like that you know it it takes a slight hit aesthetically but it makes it more adaptable so i'm glad you said that chris because coming over here you might be like well where does the second battery mount you know on, on this bike over here on the e-swoop and the stoker they're they're back here behind the seat tube and it can be a little bit tough to kind of remove or get to these batteries but it leaves the the midsection of the frame open for those bottle cage bosses on this one they actually put the the second battery right here might be a little bit easier to get to it actually brings some weight forward which could be good so i actually like this layout a lot and we still have bottle cage bosses look at four bosses right here so you could put a bottle cage way up high and then maybe have room for folding lock there's a lot of different things that you can do with this but these extra i guess this is welded on and then some bosses right here that's specifically designed for the bosch battery and it kind of inserts this little metal chunk inserts into their docking station 250 dollars just for that docking station so if you're someone who already has a bosch powered electric bike uh these batteries the 500 and the 400 they're interchangeable with that 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 same mounting rack design, which is cool. It's gonna be easier to rent those, borrow those, or use them from an existing bike that you've got. $250 for the interface, or if you just wanna get a whole second battery, $1,100 for the power pack 500. And then you'd have, you know, one whole kilowatt hour of capacity. And you're gonna be able to spend that either with high torque or high speed, or just get a long range if you have the standard performance line motor. I'm gonna go through some of the other specs here. This is a 20 tooth chain ring up here, and that's because it's the speed motor. Uh, back here we have 11 to 42 teeth sunrace cassette 10 speeds shimano dior and it does have that clutch you put it in the up position and it sort of it tightens a little bit so you don't get as much chain bounce you can see that the chain's a little bit close to that right chain stay but they do have a plastic sticker there designed to protect the color this comes in glossy black like this or kind of a glossy yellow by the way i really like the, the dual color options uh, the smaller sprocket up here spins two and a half times for every crank arm revolution and that's how the bosch performance line motors um, work and, and there's a little bit of extra drag there if you're pedaling this unassisted so you're pedaling every pedal rotation there's a little bit of gearing reduction gearing to make that work but it makes this motor extremely fast and efficient and powerful it's, it's a very zippy feeling motor it's one of my favorites because it's so it's just it's responsive and it's smart it's a little bit smarter than some of the other motors so you've got the uh, magnet here that passes a little sensor down there you've got pedal cadence measurements happening and pedal torque measurements happening so that's three different signals over a thousand times per second including shift detection so if you're shifting gears and stuff that could be a lot of pressure especially with the high torque cx motor option 
and the drive system is designed to protect itself in a way. So I, I like that. That's one of the reasons for me Bosch is a, is a winning product. And then these batteries, they have new ones that are mounted in, inside the frame tubing called the power tube. But I like because the plastic one's lighter and it's more universal, it's backwards compatible like, like we talked about. And you can see all the cables that Chris was talking about. Extra cycles kind of gone with the you know, more fixable, maybe a little bit less aesthetically pleasing, but you can you can do a little bit more with this. You can take care of it yourself a little bit easier. It's it's more accessible, um, and not quite as, you know, there, there's a whole world of products out there and you, you buy something, it's like, can I repair it? And how much cost is that gonna be with, with a dealer like Chris? You know, they, there's like a two year comprehensive warranty and you've got like, I think lifetime on the frame and some good stuff happening, but, you still need someone to help work on the bike. So are these actually easier to work on for you guys? Yeah, I mean, definitely having the cables on the outside, generally speaking, it's going to be easier to work on. Some companies do a good job of integrating it and make that accessible, but the most accessible is really having those cables on the outside. And it's less prone to issues, too, because sometimes you have to make those really tight squeezes oh, with yeah. the cable, and it could potentially kink the cable or you know cause some additional friction, make the shifter not work as well. So... I, I respect this choice. You know, it's definitely more in that utility perspective as opposed to, you know, going with like the high design, um, which yeah. that's something that, you know, speaking with Ross, they made an intentional decision yeah. to go in that direction. Okay, we, you know, we cover that a little bit here. And with the black, the cables really blend into the frame. So it's kind of like, yeah. Um, you know, I, I like the choices that they've made with the handlebars, with the comfort on these ergonomic grips. This is a this is a pretty comfortable saddle. If you wanted to add a little bit more comfort than just the higher volume tires, these are 24 by 2.5, by the way. You notice there's reinforcement eyelets. It's just, it's nicer hardware. These are Alex rims right here. The, uh, the bike does have a 31.6 millimeter seat post, and you could swap that out for a thud buster, a body float, something like that, and give you that like a little bit more comfortable feel. But even as is, the swept back handlebars, the ergonomic grips, and then coming back to those tires, um, I feel like they've done a pretty good job. It's a good combination of durability but and, and some puncture resistance, but by having a slightly smaller diameter, you're actually getting some strength because the spokes are shorter, and you're lowering that, that the whole frame is a little bit lower. It makes it more approachable, easier to load, and then they're both the same size. Some of the other extra cycle bikes, in fact, I think maybe, does this one have the smaller rear wheel, Chris? This one's doing the 2424, that's it. So, same, so I'm thinking of the East Whoop. concept, yeah, we did the review on the East Whoop, and 20 inch in the re rear, 26 in the front. So there's a specific uh, foot, rest made for the rfa and then there's also option to do just pegs as well if you wanted That's a right. very simple lightweight option yeah yeah so just to summarize all of that the smaller wheel in the rear it brings the rear rack even lower and you get a lot of extra strength but in in my opinion it's like now you got to have two different tube you know, tube sizes and tires and there's kind of a lot you're dealing with is the trade-off worth it it seems like their newer models are just going with 24. yeah it's just the extension of the range i mean i think from my perspective, for a smaller rider carrying a lot of weight, it's probably easier with a 20-inch wheel in the rear, like okay. a lower center of gravity. But uh, but yeah, I think it's extending the capabilities and kind of going in more of that like traditional bike style and bike feel yeah. with the same wheels. You said these were like BMX tires or something. Or yeah, something. they are. And it says even on there, it's like made for, for professional use. So it's huh. kind of like serious uh, jumps and stuff like that. <laughs> That's cool. Uh, Have you jumped this thing at all? Not, not much. I'm not get a really chance a later. Myself, but, uh, I know Corey did, so maybe we could get a chance to see that on camera. The other thing that's worth calling out with a slightly larger diameter, you know, there's more air volume, but you get a lower attack angle because the, the radius and the, the diameter of the wheel is, is larger. So it kind of spans cracks a little bit. It's going to feel a little bit more comfortable in the rear if you have a rear passenger or something like that. So those are just some of the trade-offs, just, you know, some discussion points and stuff. And back to a few things that you can adjust. This is a steel fork, right, Chris? Yeah same chromoly 4130 extra sturdy a little bit of vibration dampening and again you don't want that that frame flex happening if you do have a heavier load in the back so uh, man i i do want to call out 250 watt nominal on all the bosch motors but some of them it's kind of like well 350 if it's the us and they they peak out over 500 watts and the newton meters is really what i focus on so for me you know the the high reading of like how quickly you're pedaling is is one thing, the thousand times per second, but also um, the fast feedback on motor response. I mean, how many? It's it's 
uh, the pedal cadence can support up to 120 RPM. That's right. On these, yeah. and for me, that's a big deal because a lot of times I'll, I'll dump the gears. I'll go into a really low gear to climb, and I'm spinning because I have a sensitive knee. And having a motor that can keep up with you that also offers like high torque that's reliable. So okay. it's a good thing for me. So, yeah, I agree. Yeah, so that's you know I'm just kind of giving you guys the specs and also some qualitative feedback. I feel like we've covered most of this, but safety is a big deal to me. So having an integrated light that's fairly large, it's a nice reflective surface. It's a little bit lower and with the lower, you know, smaller wheel diameter, a lot of times, you know, I'm wearing a helmet here that has um, a light built into the back just for safety. And you might want to have some reflectors on the back of the child seat or a backpack, especially for the black frame like this. We have an integrated light up here that's up high, that points where you steer and it has side windows. That's a big deal. To me, this is, this is a really a winning light. We've got hydraulic disc brakes, two finger levers. You really don't need that much strength or power to stop this bike, even if it's it's heavier loaded in part because we have these 180 millimeter hydraulic disc brakes 180 millimeters when you're on a 24 inch wheel you get a nice mechanical advantage and then even though it's a little bit further for this cable to go all the way back it's not mechanical it's not going to be stretching over time it's hydraulic hey so it's it's a nice setup you know would i have liked to seen res reflective sidewall stripes on these tires yeah that's one one area where it's like that would be one little thing you could do i've seen on amazon or whatever they have black reflective stickers you can put on the frame and a lot of gear like cycling gear has reflective points sure. yeah absolutely just thinking or about reflectors those on the spokes which it might even come with them sometimes we don't always put them on because most of the tires are generally coming with reflective sidewalls but yeah that's a great point yeah yeah thanks chris um so yeah for me it's neat to see a bike that's sort of bridging the gap and as someone who doesn't have a lot of space and I don't have a ton of extra money, I, I don't have multiple bikes. I kind of have one bike and I try to use it for everything. And that's that's what we're doing here. Right? That's right, yeah, yeah. Sweet. A great point about that as well, about it not being like too long necessarily. You can also fit it on most standard bike racks, which is a really oh, uh, helpful let me think of that. Uh, deal. Cause that's one of the challenges sometimes with the longer bikes is transporting them. Yeah, uh, elevators, yeah. question mark, There you go. things like that. So, I, you know, I'm trying to review this and call out some trade-offs, compromises. So one of them is, is the, you are paying a little bit more. I feel like Extra Cycle is kind of like a boutique company. They've really focused on either add-ons to make cargo bikes and now cargo electric bikes uh, that are pretty nice. I like the kickstand. I like the, the op optional colors, but you do end up paying a little bit more. I mean, the price starts to go up when you have a cargo bike and you have to buy all these accessories. But this is a company that's been around for a while. Do you know how long Extra Cycle? I mean, Ross has been in this for since I started back in 2012. I mean, it's a oh while. yeah, well, doing electric specifically, right? Um, so previously they were doing conversions and that sort of thing. But I mean, it actually converting regular bikes to cargo with bikes. The free that's radical, where they kind of right? started with the free radical. Yeah, and they had different frames and that sort of thing. But I guess it was they were actually Bosch's first customer in the U.S. Really? Uh, or that's what. Uh, Ross was mentioning the other day and I, I remember they were you know with the first ones with the edge runner yeah that they had yeah and some of the That's other cool. brands that launched around that same time um, in basically 2014 so okay. So yeah. for me, that's, you know, you get a good warranty in there. If Bosch trusts them, that's a pretty good sign. Yeah, and they were one of the first there. So yeah, you know, there's the the motors here this one it's got kind of that plastic bubble it's not quite as like integrated as some of the even the newer bosch motors that are kind of a little bit tighter and that might make it easier to replace if you had to bosch does have a good warranty it's a little bit more exposed with the wires and stuff like we talked about uh and and then the display panel up here they're using the Pyreon, which is you know it's kind of a basic display i like that the the intuvia that can be mounted in the middle it's bigger easier to read and it's removable which can be nice um, and we'll talk about that in a minute the, the details Chris we were talking about the charger for this bike the the base level bike that's 4495 it comes with a 2 amp charger right single battery comes with a 2 amp dual battery comes with a 4 amp charger. right so you know good on them for giving you the faster charger when you get two batteries and they're trying to keep that price low otherwise for you know the more affordable one so I'm gonna turn this thing on there's a power button up top this does swivel a little bit if you don't over tighten it and there is a micro USB port but it's it's not actually functional on this that's more for diagnostics so for me those are the trade-offs you can't remove the bigger display or you can't remove it like the bigger display and that one has a functional USB but they do have a Bosch Kiox upgrade option and mm -hmm. shops like yours propelled you can actually pay you I don't know if it's a couple hundred bucks and then you can swap the display so for the Intuvia? The, we can swap Intuvia aftermarket anytime. The Kiox can be selected at purchase um, 
but at the moment, Kiox is not available sold as an out. aftermarket upgrade. Oh, it's not? I saw it on the website. It said on, sold out. It's available directly from Extra Cycle, but as a shop, we can't buy you the, can't upgrade it. the Kiox display to, okay. to upgrade it at the moment. So sort of a minor thing, but I want to be really complete with you guys and stuff. So we've got speed here at the top. This is grayscale. It is backlit. It's kind of a faint white glow. You can't turn that off. Um, trip distance right here and if we hold the minus key it goes from trip distance to total distance odometer to range range is really cool because it dynamically updates and you'll notice the battery down here there's just five bars so each bar represents a 20 percent step it's not quite as precise when you start to look at the range menu and i press plus i go to eco mode wait for a second now it says 84 miles and that's just one battery one power pack 500 that's based on the last about mile of riding with me relatively lightweight guy who's you know fairly active you can, you can go a long way on these bikes, and that's the efficiency of a mid-drive. You leverage that, that cassette in the rear. And with 10 speeds, and by the way, here's the trigger shifter up here. We have the two-way high, multi-shift low. It's one of my favorites. And then if we go all the way up to turbo modes, the highest level of assist drops down to 37. So your tire pressure, wind, hills, your weight, cargo weight, all that comes into play, but it's very dynamic and it updates as you ride. And then down here, there's a walk mode. So we press that and then hold the plus button see the bike kind of pedaling itself right there which is pretty cool nice if you get a flat tire or if you're in a place like a park where it's really not appropriate to ride a big bike or you just don't feel comfortable it's got that so i feel like that's it's kind of everything um there are some more settings and stuff and i have a, a specific purion video back in the ebr forums and before we go out on a ride i want to come back over here to the stoker so chris has a youtube channel as well that he's just launched for Propel, what's the channel name, Chris? Uh, Propel Electric Bikes, yeah. Sweet, and and he did like a really nice overview of this bike, and it's got some great footage and goes into a little bit more depth. We're not covering that one today, so if you have questions, you know, check out his video. I might put a link to that in the description, and from here, we can do a little ride. Let's do it. That sound yeah. good? Great, so I'm gonna hop on this one. We'll go for a minute. There's a couple murals you were talking about, right? Yeah, let's check it out. Yeah, let's do that. I am up in the highest level of assist. So we're gonna get sporty performance. Here we go. very responsive and I'm gonna pass Chris because I'm on the speed motor here oh that was nice thank you, thank you yeah. here we go right, nice. pretty quickly you're up to speed feeling very stable no no wobble no speed wobble and even the frame I, I did some shaking earlier just trying to get a sense for what this would feel like if it was loaded up and uh, it felt really good. It's one of the murals right here. It's pretty cool. All right, a lot of beautiful stuff happening in Long Beach. And this is where you could actually go and test the bikes. How are you doing out there, man? So yeah, guys, I, I spend a lot of time on like full suspension mountain bikes and stuff. And I'm, I'm a fan of these like slightly wider tires, especially for e-bikes. And with this tread, you're not getting a lot of drag. There's a really good balance here of like, you know, the lower frame height, the strength, and uh, not a lot of noise being produced. It's a good setup. Okay, guys, we're on the promenade. Some nice indoor, outdoor restaurants, some music going on over there. Cool murals. This is a really cool spot, Chris. Where are yeah. we at? Yeah, this is the promenade in downtown Long Beach. Okay, so. yeah, cool. Just right around the corner from a shop, and we were uh, we were taken off earlier, and the you know kickstand was down. And one of the things I noticed I, I had the scratch there. I think part of it's the pedal lock. So where they have that kickstand, it's designed to handle the front rack, the rear rack, and it it's a solid kickstand. But it does have a little bit of lock. That's something I call out for other bikes. So I wanted to kind of be fair and mention it here. We put it forward. It stows nicely hangs down a little bit so keep that in mind we were talking about the derailleur before with the 20 inch wheels even with a bike like this that's something you want to keep an eye on if you're going over big curbs and stuff just so you don't break it i mean that's a that's a pretty awesome um kickstand so i'm going to take it back up to turbo and chris you want to hop on let's do it yeah Maybe we can hand this to you all right <laughs> get the handles i just want to see what this actually feels like uh riding with someone on the back here we go Feel 
definitely not as much work as like you'd think carrying around an extra 150, a couple hundred pounds, and then stabilizing the bike feels pretty good right now. I've just got like a foot down, I'm over the midstep, and Chris is helping. Yeah, I have my feet down, and actually at the moment I don't have the foot pegs or the foot rests set up on here, but I could still handle it pretty right? well, yeah. <laughs> good core, yeah. There we go. I'm gonna trade off with you. Sure. Down all right. shift now that's you. Now the tables are turning here. <laughs> okay, I'm ready when you are. Ready? All right. Here we go. Whoa, boy. More cool street art over there. Oh, yeah. Man, that's the cool thing about Long Beach. There's a lot of hidden gems around here. Yeah, a lot of art, a lot of music. Definitely a cool place. Absolutely. And the brakes were, they were really solid for me, too, when I was riding, which is nice with that extra, just the extra weight and stuff, kind of what you'd expect. These nicer bikes, a lot of times it's like, it's just what do you want you know they're all specked out pretty nicely i noticed that we've almost got bottle cage bosses there on the side of that rack too so yeah and even on the front of the snack bars right here too. oh what all right we're rolling sounds good that's great for like a folding lock and then do you know if this has abis keys or what uh i believe that it does yeah yeah, yeah. it is uh key to like that's nice sometimes you can get the key to like like chris is saying where you get a lock that uses the same key I can't fully confirm that. It'd be a good thing to ask him or your local dealer. It's that shift detection in action, shifting pretty smoothly. And there's a little, you know, most of these motors, they're all uh, internally geared, the mid drives. And so there's a little bit of ring. and they each have a different noise, um, especially at higher RPM. There we go, there's a brake test. It's pretty good. Guys, I think that's about it. We're probably just gonna head back to the shop. There's, a, oh, is this the other mural? Yeah, the other mural there, there we go. Maybe we'll, we'll hold on for one more minute. We'll pass that. Are you gonna go around the block or are you gonna turn left yeah, I here? Could, I could go a little over there. It's really cool. This is part of uh, Long Beach has this program called Pow Wow. And basically they fly in artists from all over the world and they do these massive murals. And it, it really uh, does a nice job of kind of beautifying the city. And, just it matches the grips. Things, right? <laughs> yeah. There you go. This is cool. And the beach is just down that way. It's a really cool space to have your shop, man. Yeah. Love it. Okay, guys. Here we go. I'm helping out. Right. Yabba dabba do. <laughs> here we go. Love that art, man. This is a brand new one, right? This is brand new. Yeah, it was just completed uh, last month, actually. <laughs> wow. It's pretty, pretty amazing. Yeah. And this is where we started, right up here by the... These nice right. buildings. Yeah, this is a new building. This is the city hall and then the port building. That's the old city hall, which is going to be actually become apartment buildings. But, huh. Yeah. yeah, we'll have to do some more of those ride tours, right, Court? That I would was, love that. That was a lot of fun. This is great. You guys, I think that's it. I we'll have all the specs back at the site, the length, the width, the weight, all the details that we go for, electricbikereview.com. Check out Chris's video over, what's your YouTube channel again? Uh, Propel Electric Bikes. Okay, yeah, for, for a little bit more information on that. E-Stoker, have fun out there. Love you guys, ride safe. We'll see you next time.